Hello, Internet. This video is all about my Smart Shelves 2.0. Now, this video is part of the Dream Garage playlist on Scott's Garage, where I've been transforming an unfinished 40-year-old garage into a finished garage and for what is, for me, as a project person, a dream garage. And these Smart Shelves 2.0 are a big part of it. Now, the first Smart Shelves that I built were three years ago in my garage in Texas. And, and that video and that project, it blew up my channel. It's still my number one video, over a half million views. And I'll put a, a link up here if you want to watch the, the original video on that. Now, what makes Smart Shelves 2.0 and the original set of Smart Shelves smart are three things. First of all, the, the location. It's, it's hung in an area in the garage that normally is not utilized for storage, between the, the rail for the garage door and the wall. So there's, there's plenty of storage. Why not utilize that space that otherwise is not used? Secondly, these shelves hang securely from the ceiling. And that means that the, the floor is, is all open. And, and I prefer that. Uh, if I'm working on a project and, and I have to blow dust out or whatever, I like the, the floor clean and access to the floor. Later, if I want to epoxy the floor, likewise, it, it's easy to do that. I don't have to contend with the shelves. Now, what really makes this set of smart shelves and the, and the original ones smart is that there's space behind the shelves, a lot of space. You can store four by eight sheets of anything. And, and that's really convenient. Now in this video, I'm gonna give you seven reasons why these Smart Shelves 2.0 are smarter than the original. And then I'll go into great detail on how I, I made Smart Shelves 2.0 in case you wanna build some for yourself. Now the first reason that these Smart Shelves 2.0 are better and smarter is that the overall project costs less. I was able to build these shelves for less than $100 and I know with the original smart shelves, it was around $125, $130. Now, the second reason the 2.0 shelves are, are better is that they're stronger by far. And that's because of the material I used on these. In the original smart shelves, I used 5 8 inch MDF board. Now, in, on these shelves, I used 23 30 seconds, seven panel plywood, which is almost three quarters of an inch thick, which makes these much stronger. Now, the third reason that the Smart Shelves 2.0 are better is that even though they're stronger, they're lighter weight. And that's because MDF board weighs a ton. The plywood was lighter, even though it was thicker and stronger. And secondly, I scaled back the depth of most of the shelves. The original Smart Shelves, the shelf depth was about seven and a half inches. And now for, for these, I made most of the shelves six inches I did leave the bottom shelf seven inches because that's the, the right depth for a can of paint. But it lightened up the shelves considerably. Now the fourth reason that these Smart Shelves 2.0 are better is simply the overall placement. My original Smart Shelves, I built three inches from the outside wall. And for garage repair people who watch the video, they just said that's a horrible idea, way too close to the outside wall. And for, for newer garage doors, the spring is right there. And there's a lot of criticism, and rightly so. So for these shelves, there's a good three and a half feet between the shelves and the outside wall. So that makes these shelves better. Now, the fifth reason that these Smart Shelves 2.0 are smarter is that I made these shelves to be detachable. It's kind of hard for you to see it right now, but there are couplers up here. And if you watch the rest of the video, I'll show you the detail of how I did that. But if ever I wanted to take the shelves down, if ever I wanted to move them to a different garage, I can easily do that. And that makes these shelves smarter. Now the sixth reason that the Smart Shelves 2.0 are smarter than, than the originals has to do with the outlets. In my Texas garage, I hung those shelves way too close to an outlet. It was hard to get to it. And I made sure that I did not repeat the mistake for this one. Now, the seventh and final reason that the Smart Shelves 2.0 are smarter than my original ones is that I gave more space behind them. There's a full eight inches of space back here. I've already tried it, but I can even store my ladders now behind the Smart Shelves. That makes these better. Now, let's get into the detail of how I built these shelves. Okay, but all the supplies at Home Depot could not believe it. $54 for what is basically a three quarter inch piece of plywood, seven ply. I had them cut it, I don't have a pickup truck yet, 
So I had them take two feet off the end and then the remaining part they cut into thirds. Now if you want to look for the threaded rod, 10 foot threaded rod, you look in the electrical section of Home Depot or Lowe's. Okay, I, I took those cut pieces from Home Depot and basically ripped them down on my table saw to six inches for the most part. There was one board that I cut to seven inches because I knew the bottom shelf would be seven, not six. Okay, I marked the threaded rod to 76 inches, which should give me about an inch and a half to spare at the bottom of the shelves. I put my metal blade on my compound miter saw, have my safety goggles on, let's make a cut. As you can see, I made nice straight cuts using the compound miter saw and the metal blade. Having said that, every rod has metal burrs on it where, where I made the cut. And no matter how hard I would try, I could not get a nut on there. Now I've worked with threaded rods now for years and I've always wrestled with this, you know, what's the best solution for this? And what I used to do is, is put the nut on first, then make the cut and then back then a nut off, and, and, and that does work. However, I've come up with a foolproof solution to this problem. Okay, here's the solution I come up with. It's called an external camper tool, and I'll put an Amazon affiliate link below for your convenience. And if you use my link, it's, it costs you the same on Amazon, but eventually a small portion of the sale will be sent to me. Now it's a camphor tool, it's meant to attach to your drill. And as you can tell, it is cone shape. It has carbide steel blades on, on, the, on the inside and it will, it will knock the burrs down and it'll put a nice camphor edge on your threaded rod. You can also use this if you cut off a bolt and you, know, you wanna easily thread the nut on. So let me show you how it's done. Now the threaded rod is going to want to spin as you're using this tool. I sometimes put it into a, a vise. That's probably the better way to go. Uh, today I'm simply going to use some, some leather, leather gloves here and try to get a firm, firm grip on this. Voila. So my smart shelves here in Montana, similar to the ones in Texas, are going to be hung on the west wall and between the rail for the, the garage door and, and the wall, uh, between these two outlets. Uh, this time though, I'm going to have plenty of room on this side, uh, about really about three and a half feet there. And if you saw my video on, on hanging the OSB on the ceiling, you know that I put in place already some pre-hung bolts and, and couplers. You, you can see them up there. They are, uh, each pair is, is four feet from the other. And like, like on the left side up here, uh, that's, it's about five inches apart. And I wanna explain that uh, to you. There's a couple different ways of attaching the, the threaded rod. Uh, this is the option that I chose. Now let me explain it. First of all, in explaining it, the OSB on the ceiling is attached to uh, some rafters that, are, that run this way. They are 16 inches apart and I, I simply screwed the, the OSB on them. I have a separate video on that. Now, before I did that, I cut some two by fours, very similar to this one. So you can see that I, I drilled two holes in this two by four, three eighths inch drill bit. And these are six inches apart, centered on the two by four. And what I did is I used bolts exactly like these. These are five and a half inches in length, same thread count as the threaded rod over here. I put a washer on top and simply push the, the bolts down. Next, I added these couplers. Screw them in halfway. 
I carried the two by four up in the attic. Again, the ceiling had not been attached yet. And simply put the two by four on top of the rafters uh, and placed them in the position exactly where I wanted them to be. Uh, attached uh, with, uh, with some screws, the two by four uh, to the rafters. And then basically when I built the ceiling and, and used the OSB, I worked around the bolts and the couplers. Now my reason for doing that was that I knew it was gonna take several months before I would build the smart shelves. I didn't want the threaded rods hanging down. It would just look bad. Uh, the, the other way to go, and, and I've done this, is simply do the same thing. You put your two by four on top in, in, in the attic, and, and then from the bottom side, you run your full threaded rod, drill a hole through your ceiling, you know, put it through there. You have to put a washer and a nut and then thread lock, and then basically have the full threaded rod um, hanging down. Having said that, this is the method that I prefer, and the, the uh, beautiful thing about it is that this basically acts as a disconnect, and if you ever wanted to take the shelves down, this would be a much easier way to disconnect them. Okay, this box I call a cubby. It's a cubby space. And I made it out of extra OSB. There's nothing fancy about it whatsoever. Uh, I did paint it. And what I'm going to do is suspend this on a ladder center to where I'm putting the shelves. And then I'm gonna use the threaded rod with some nuts already screwed into the right location from the bottom. And I'll basically uh, thread in the rods and then I'll tighten them. And then I'll be attaching this cubby box to the wall and to the ceiling, and then the smart shelves will, will hang below them. Okay, you can see the cubby in place, the cubby box. I had no problem lifting it up. The thread of rods are holding it in there securely. In addition though, I sunk several screws through the cubby, uh, through the OSB into the two by fours behind the OSB and it is firmly in place. It's time now to build the rest of the smart shelves. Okay, so I've marked 14 inches from there to here and then the width of the board. I've done it all the way along uh, the panel here. Uh, the shelves will be 14 inches apart. And I, I've set this on my compound miter saw, the depth. And so it goes not quite halfway through. And I'm just going to use the compound miter saw basically to, uh, to cut down. And I'll do that with, with all the grooves for the shelves. Now on to the second side. Okay, don't be distracted by the tennis ball that's uh, from the ceiling. That's for pulling my daughter's car in. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I have a quarter inch thick piece of plywood that is exactly four feet by six feet. It, it's square. And I'm gonna use that to make sure that the, the, the sides of the smart shelves are perfectly square. And so what I'll be doing is using these little screws uh, from the bottom, from under here, and uh, what are the sides that I can get to, and, and then I'll, I'll slide it over and you know, likewise, just making sure it's square, and then I'll start uh, building the shelves. So I decided that a small pilot hole would be better uh, before putting the 
pan screws in. So here I'm putting the shelves in, and once I get all the shelves in place, I will be putting a pilot hole pre-drilling, if you will, uh, two holes for each side on each shelf, and then putting in a, an inch and a half wood screw, cinching it up. Now I've already painted most of the cut plywood. I just have a few pieces left here. And the paint that I use in my garage is the Valspar cabinet furniture paint. It's oil enriched. So if you're using a brush or a roller, um, any brush stroke will eventually just even itself out. You won't even see the brush strokes. This is a satin finish. And the color for this garage, it seemed to match the colors, is, is called Soft Panther. And I'm just gonna finish just a couple more pieces here and most of the painting will be done. I want to show you some of the detail of the bottom shelf. So the first thing to notice is the bottom shelf is, is wider. It's actually seven inches where the other shelves are six inches. Uh, I'll explain the rationale of this here in a few minutes. Uh, but the bottom shelf is, is seven inches and the sides are only six inches. And, and so I, I rounded it uh, just so there's not an abrupt edge right here. Um, I, I also created what is called a, a rabbit joint basically a groove that, that's cut, and it's just halfway uh, through the plywood. And the reason for that was that I, I cut the quarter inch plywood at exactly, well, it's four feet wide and then six feet. And I should have allowed uh, another inch uh, on both sides. And, and I, I forgot to do that. So it's, it's flush right here. And I don't want there to be a gap as you look in to see a gap. So I, I uh, cut again the, the rabbit here and it just fits in nicely. Like so. Let me give you a close up of that. There we go. So again, nice, uh, nice, nicely fitting. Uh, I have some touch up paint here towards the end. I'll be touching up all that. And then from this front angle, top angle, uh, there, there's no gap there. Again, it, it uh, it overlaps a little bit and it's nice and clean. And this is the, the top shelf. It's only six inches wide, but likewise, in order for there to not be a gap uh, with the, the plywood in the back, uh, just a little rabbit joint right there. And that took care of the problem. You can see here, I flipped the shelves over and I marked on the quarter inch plywood, the, the center of each of the shelves going across. And what I'm doing here is I'm using my nailer and adding inch and a half brad nails all over the place uh, through the quarter inch plywood into the thicker three quarter inch plywood. And I can't emphasize this enough. It, this is really important. These little brads add tremendous shear strength to the overall shelves. It will help prevent this, the shelves from sagging and it just adds tremendous strength. 
Okay, what I'm doing here is attaching two studs. They're two by three by 52 inches. I pre-drilled them and the threader rods go through the holes. There's a washer and a nut. And, and, and basically these two studs will support the, all the shelves and then the nuts will cinch the smart shelves to the cubby, which is attached to the ceiling and the wall. Got some help in easily lifting them up into place. And what I'm doing here is using a ratchet, simply tightening the nuts, and it puts a lot of pressure then onto the cubby, nice and uh, firmly attached. Well, here they are, my Smart Shelves 2.0. Hey, if you got any value at all from this video, from this project, please reward me by right now giving me a thumbs up. It costs you nothing, but is a great value to me. And we'll see you in the next video, and that's going to be to insulate and to beautify these old garage doors. See you next time.